A lot of people think meat is expensive. And if you take a look at Sean Baker, a popular carnivore dieter's Instagram, and you see that he spends $50, $70 a day on steaks, you'll be like, wow, this is completely crazy. And that really is completely crazy. There's many ways to source decent quality foods at very affordable prices, way less than what most people spend on food on the carnivore diet. So just to throw some statistics out there, people spend an average of 70 to 80 per week on groceries, but 100 to 140 on food in general. That includes eating out, coffee in the morning, really adds up. So people spend approximately 300 per month purely on groceries and 500 to 600 per month, all food bills included. So keep that in mind when we start throwing numbers out there. I went to Restaurant Depot and the pricing is similar to Costco. It's just a bit different of a selection. And this five pound tube of Halal 7327 ground beef was $1.89 a pound. So it was about $9.50 for this five pound tube. And the, this 15 dozen egg box was $17.72. So just over a dollar per dozen eggs. And I didn't buy butter today, but butter is around $3.50 to $4 a pound commercially. So that would be about a dollar per stick of butter. And if we could figure, okay, how much would you really eat per day max? Two pounds of ground beef, a dozen eggs, a stick of butter. That's going to be about 380 for the ground beef, about $1.20 for the eggs. So that's going to be about $5. And then another dollar for the stick of butter, maybe a little cheaper. So at the most, for what people would eat, you're spending $5.50 to $6.50 per day on food. That's very affordable. That's probably half of what most people spend on groceries per month, if that is all you're eating. And, you know, is this optimal? I mean, it's better than eating pork and chicken, and I don't really want to touch too much on those animal foods. They are high omega-6, and people do tend to find themselves feeling better on beef. So, for me to say, all right, save a couple bucks and go chicken and pork, I really can't recommend doing that. But what's funny is people will say they feel better eating beef because the omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are better in beef than pork and chicken, but then they won't try grass-fed beef, which has even better omega-3 to omega-6 ratios. But uh, that's a whole different story in itself. So hypothetically speaking, we're around 650 per day eating. Very, very affordable. And now you can say, all right, Frank, well, what would you add to this at a minimum? I mean, it's safe to say we want to get probably 50 to $100 in organ meats and fish in supplements. So I guess on a budget, you could probably get away with $50 on cod liver, cod liver oil pills, whatever supplements you want. And then your whole monthly budget would be around $250. And if you can't afford $250 per month on food, I really don't know what to tell you. That's at the high end. Let's say you didn't eat a lot. Let's say you had half a dozen eggs, 60 cents. One pound of ground beef, $1.80. You're up to $2.40. Let's say you had half a stick of butter, $50. $3 per day on food. And then let's say you cut the supplements in half, 20 bucks. $110 a month. Food stamps are like 170. You could literally live on food stamps on this diet if you bought food from certain sources, and especially if you got stuff on sale. This wasn't even on sale. So pricing can be incredibly low for the carnivore diet, from three to seven dollars a day, depending on whether you're maybe a small woman, you don't eat that much, or you're a much larger active person. Uh, so that, that leg of lamb over there, if you guys are just wondering, uh, I got that on sale at my local supermarket for four dollars a pound, and that's high quality grass-fed Australian stuff. And so we pretty much went over a super duper cheap budget and that would be going to Costco, Sam's Club, restaurant supply store and buying in bulk, spending 150, 200 at once. This here is what I got from my local supermarket. This is uh, some lamb fat and I paid $1.50 per pound for this lamb trim fat, grass fed Australian lamb trim fat, $1.50 per pound amazing source of calories, super nutritious. The difference between this and the butter for calories would be this is of course less inflammatory because it's not conventional pasteurized butter and it has a higher vitamin content because it's grass fed. Before I show you guys this, 
This is incredibly unusual. I had to pick up these steaks at the supermarket because of how good they looked. Look at the marbling on these Australian New York strip steaks. It is completely insane. They got the, they must have got like a primal from a Wagyu cow or something. I was like, oh my god, I gotta buy this. And I got those New York strip steaks for eight dollars a pound. The point isn't for me to get you guys jealous. That that's never happened before. That's the only time that's ever happened to me in my life. I got that super marbled grass fed Australian New York strip. But what I'm getting at is I pay about seven to eight dollars a pound for high quality grass fed meat in my local supermarket. So how does that affect the budget? Well, if I eat a pound and a half to two pounds of meat per day, I'm spending about $15 on meat and the fat source and the organ meat source. Uh, let's, let's do a month. Like my monthly budget is probably 500 to 700 per month because if I spend, you know, $15 a day on food, on just the muscle meat, that's 450. If I spend an additional 50 on fat, that's 500. Then I usually spend 100 to 150 on organ meats, going up to 600, 650. But I usually fast a lot. So if I fast a quarter of the time, then my budget goes down to $400. And what's the difference between you spending $200 and me spending $400? Is I fast a little bit, I buy much higher quality food, and I put a lot more effort into my sourcing. So my diet versus this diet is gonna be a lot less inflammatory. You know, there's no negative antibiotics in the eggs and the ground beef. The nutrient content overall is higher. I mean, I have some pastured eggs over there that I buy for my family that are $6 a dozen. So my question to you is, you know, would you rather spend maybe $150 per month on food, you know, save two, $300 and sacrifice your health in the long run? The way I look at it for me, unfortunately, is I have to market myself and a big part of my life is my appearance, how I look, how I perform. So if I know I feel better and perform better and do way better on the, the grass fed, spending a little more money, uh, and I still think that's a very, very affordable thing to do if I could spend four or 500 a month on food. That's to me very affordable and that doesn't include, sometimes I go buy fish row, uh, but yes guys, I do have, I have meat purveyors in New York City. I go down to the New Fulton Fish Market. I get fish row for $2 a pound. I buy aggressive ribeye in bulk for $7 a pound. I get this, you know, I get a lot of stuff for cheaper prices than most people can afford to do. And the way I did that was I explored all my local options for wholesalers, for meat purveyors. I spend a lot of money at once, guys. I, uh, I have a invoice upstairs for my meat purveyor. I spent $350 this week and I spent 350 two weeks ago on meat and Frank well wait wait haven't you spent like a thousand dollars on food this month yes but I am dry aging steaks for the future if I invest 300 700 whatever this month in food I will have food in the long run for further periods of time and although unfortunately I have wasted quite a bit of money in my life on food in the past sometimes I've bought organs that haven't been good. Sometimes I've bought dry, I've tried to dry age meat and flies got to it. I remember one time I lost two legs of prosciutto because maggots laid, uh, flies laid eggs in it and there were maggots in it. I remember I've bought a case of fish before and I've had to give it away to neighbors and stuff because it was farm raised and the guy lied to me. Uh, there are downsides to dealing with these purveyors and these wholesale fish sellers. Although in the long run, I still save more money than people do. There is definitely and are definitely cons to to buying in wholesale in bulk. Generally speaking, I'm not buying an actual large amount of food compared to who they sell to. You know, it might be a lot for me, it might be a lot of money for an average person, but compared to a restaurant, most restaurants spend more money in one day than I spend in two months of buying meat. So Keep in mind, even though you're going to a wholesaler and you're spending a lot of money, they're not necessarily going to give you the good stuff or give you a good deal or uh, anything like that. So hopefully in the future, I mean, I would love to open up my own kind of, I know which, I know which producers sell what meat, I know how to get stuff. So I would love to open up my own kind of butcher box thing in the future where I just, I get fresh meat, I dry age it myself, I sell it to people, uh, I ship it out at very affordable prices, very fresh especially sourcing organ meats and fish row. Guys, if you literally, if somehow we did a GoFundMe and you guys dropped me like a couple hundred Gs, we'd have Frankie's market up within like a week. 
I would literally be shipping you guys, like I could make tuna in macadamia nut oil, can it. I could make fish roe, canned fish roe that I could sell to you guys as a health food. I could buy these primals and I could sell them to you at better prices than ButcherBox does. Uh, you know, I, I know what pricing you can get on meat and I know what people are willing to pay for stuff. So may, maybe sometime in the future, but I think we've kind of gone over the budget and I'm, I'm so, I can't tell you how excited I am for those New York strip steaks. I can't. I know it's not going to be that good because it's not ribeye, it's New York strip. But again, guys, that never happens. I'm going to take pictures on my Instagram for that too. So, uh, and I guess just to touch briefly on, all right, well, Frank, well, if you're doing this diet, what do you need? You, you know, your DHA, your omega-3 intake might be low. So you're probably going to want to spend 20 to $50 either on omega-3 supplements or canned fish and maybe even liver to just get some extra vitamin A. Uh, possibly, I mean, you're getting eggs for vitamin K2. Everything should be fine except for the omega-3 and the vitamin A content. Uh, in the case of this stuff, though, you don't need to really supplement or add any foods to your diet. Uh, just keep in mind the main vitamins you want to get are omega-3, vitamin K2, and vitamin A. The other vitamins will come inherently. And also, uh, one thing I, I'm glad I didn't forget is the food safety aspect of this is way different. I would literally eat all of these raw if I wanted to. This stuff, I would cook it completely through. Uh, that, that's another big difference. Uh, like, I'll leave a leg of lamb on my counter overnight, but I would never serve my family undercooked hamburgers from a grain-fed cow like this, or uh, the, these eggs, you have to cook them through. I wouldn't eat a ton of them raw. Uh, well, maybe some people still would. Uh, the good thing is, I mean, this is halal ground beef, so the, the cleanliness is a little bit better than regular stuff, but uh, outside of that, just keep that in mind, guys. The, the main pros and cons are, you know, do you want to save two, three hundred dollars a month, and be worried about food safety issues, have to supplement, uh, deal with various negative things some, such as antibiotics, uh, lower vitamin content, uh, just negative aspects, you know, so you're supporting factory conventional farming. And guys, I work in New York City steakhouses. I watch people devour steaks. And if we go through a thousand steaks a night, that means I did the math one time. It was like several hundred cows worth of steaks and that's all we're serving. So. By no means am I, you know, have I always been all for sustainability, although I do personally support it myself. I just know a lot of people can't necessarily afford to do that or really care enough to do that. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, I do have a bunch of stuff in my Amazon shop below that can help you. Uh, you could buy the cod liver on there. You could buy the supplements on there that will help you with that. Uh, maybe I'll even put some canned fish on there. If you guys want to check out my website, uh, frank uh, check out the principles that I follow, and maybe if you guys are interested in a consultation. Uh, I think this is a big thing that I can really help a lot of people out with, and I've done it in the past, sourcing food. People usually tell me where they are, and I guide them through how to do these things that I do, whether it's going to local farmers markets and getting good deals, or going to local wholesalers, buying a lot of meat at once. I've done everything from purchasing whole animals to uh, going to meat purveyors, to even the supermarket. Even, you know, half the time I go to the supermarket, really, really good prices on grass-fed meat for some reason, but I'll uh, go figure. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything else like this. I was thinking about doing maybe a zero-carb carnivore on-the-go video. Uh, I don't know if I could really film in a supermarket and show you guys what I'd get, but maybe I could just buy some stuff and then bring it home and show it to you guys. But, uh...